That was yeah, pretty good. Absolutely. Well, and yeah. that's kind of, well, not kind of, that is why I became a coach and consultant because I'm like, okay, I've got these battle scars yeah. that other people need to benefit from. <laughs> yeah. We are going to get Jackie in in a moment. So uh, let's see here. Let's see what we got here. Let's bring her in. I see you. Hey, I see you too. And I can hear you. All right. Same the here. world is a better place now good. that you're here. We're good. <laughs> Done with the music. Uh, and now to the beauty of looking at all the people coming in for you. A.S. Custody Consulting. Uh, Joy is here. Uh, hi, I just Joy. love Instagram names. Go ahead. Feel free. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Are you saying hi to your friends? That's okay. That's my sister. Uh-oh. <laughs> Forget the show I was going to do. Let's get some dirt. Uh, so when you were 15, what was the boy's name that uh, made your heart go pitter-patter and butterflies feel like elephants in your stomach? Oh, gosh. 15 must have been. That, that's um, only like 13 years ago. Yeah, so, I know. Come on. Jeff Skeldon. Jeff Skeldon. Okay. Yes. Uh, is that true, Joy? Uh, hi to you too, Joy. But uh, <laughs> we want to know, Jeff, okay, okay, I want to know this. Were you the same height as he, or was he ex extremely much taller than you? No. So I don't think Joy will mind me saying this, but she's three years older than me, and he <laughs> was in her grade. He was a senior, and I was a freshman, so he was taller. <laughs> I was dating Ooh. older men when I was 15. Look at you digging into the grave to get some love. <laughs> so, hold on one second, everybody. Did you leave me hanging? Am I supposed to run the show by myself? Okay, that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, literally a first. I don't know how I did that. I left something unplugged. Oh. Go ahead. You were saying? Oh, I just said, am I supposed to run the show myself? <laughs> You should have yes. told me that. I thought the yeah, format was... I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said you were the diva for the day. Don't you remember in the show prep? I'll do it if I have to. <laughs> that is actually the first that has ever happened that I left something that I totally need in front of me, a monitor, unplugged. Uh -oh. and, and this big sign came across everybody's name and said, you're running out of batteries. All right. So uh, back to the last question that I will ask about your age of 15 and your life then. He was taller than you. He oh, yeah. was older... He was older than you. Yes, he was. But what is it that, what is it that you think he's missing out on because he, he doesn't have you today? <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. I am just a fiercely loyal and super happy person. So. Yes. I love it. I love it. You know what I told you right before we started the show? You can save that humility for somebody else's show. <laughs> <laughs> Not on this one. Uh, okay, right. so I'm going to do some uh, in-production stuff here. Because now that this thing has rebooted, uh, everybody, hold on one second. Okay, now, I did have to do that. Now I can see everybody's name. Uh, B. Goldie is here. Uh, Lynn Zelenstrom. Uh, I am, uh, of course, I um, butcher everyone's name that comes through here because I am horrible at Instagram names because I know they mean something to the person. But because I'm a senior citizen with a AARP card, I have no idea what these names mean. So feel free to put in a fake name or your real name if you uh, want to contribute to the show and talk with Jackie. Jackie? Yes. This has been the only time I've had an introduction to a show like this with so much happening that is normally ready to go. Uh, that's a first. This is the normal chaos I operate in, so I'm, I'm all good. I was going to ask you about that. What is it like for you? Yeah, for your show. What is that? Now, you, that picture you have, it, everything looks like it's going smoothly on your podcast. Yeah, it is. It's going great. <laughs> right. It's going great. So there's, there's no chaos. Everything is smooth. And that's why everyone should definitely listen to, follow, make it a part of their life. Download it, subscribe to it, rate it high, do, do whatever you need to that Jackie says you must do uh, for your podcast. The name of it, your podcast is out of crazy town, your guide to divorcing a narcissist. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, send some love to, uh, Shay, Shay, three, one, seven, eight. That's here. Thank you for being one of our loyal supportive followers of, uh, all of the platforms that we have here. Narc abuse TV network, as well as here, open session, underscore podcast, all public service channels. Um, but right now I need, 
to get back to what I was going to do, which yes. is spend time with you. All right, let's do it. All right, so uh, this is going to go fast paced uh, for some of you uh, who have never been here before. But for those of you who are accustomed to me, you know, I try to cram as much as possible into a discussion. Um, 15 years old, huh? His name was Jeff. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> no, you're not going to. I might find a way to hashtag that and just start a trend. <laughs> and he's going to be somewhere going like, why do I, why is my name coming up? With, he's going to think I'm Miller. stalking him. Like, yeah, oh, that's like exactly, thing. That's like exactly what he's going to be thinking. Thanks a lot. He's like, what does this woman want from me? That was a long time ago. All right. So. <laughs> It'd be like 900 pounds or something. All right, be careful before I get sued. All right, so um, you go like, Jackie, you look fine. <laughs> You're like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. Okay. First okay. thing, first thing I want to want to toss out to you is that I noticed that uh, you have a very soothing voice when you talk about divorce. Thank you. you you have a very reassuring way about you when you speak and the way you carry yourself uh, in videos, as well as just the, the tenor of, your, of the very way you post things uh, on your page. For, you. for example, okay. uh, September 15th, 2020. Yes. Uh, you wrote this. Healing doesn't mean the damage never existed. It means the damage no longer controls our lives. That's uh, at least that's the first post that you put here on your page. That was the first um, post. Yes, that was a post. What was your thinking when you posted that? Because you're always healing, especially from narcissistic abuse. Um, I, I don't want to say you never get over it because that sounds kind of pessimistic or doom and gloom, but you know, you've learned a really hard lesson and you operate your life around that lesson forever. So it's the platform now from which you jump mm -hmm. for everything you do. And um, so you're always kind of healing. So the platform is, is there. You say, I love the way you said that. It's kind of the thing you jump from. Yeah. If a person is springboarding, springboarding from that platform, that means that there could be moments in which it almost seems like they're going to miss their landing. They could, they could feel, they could feel alone. They could feel afraid, uh, and they may need to do some things that seem like they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of where you step in. At least that's my perspective. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. So if you're on this path of recovering from narcissistic abuse, or in my case, like you said, you're going through a divorce, which is how you may have found me. It is, was literally the most terrifying time of my life. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it is for most people um, when they're enduring the narcissistic abuse and more specifically the post-separation abuse, which I've also talked about on my website. But this person you're trying to disengage from, and especially if you have children, is now going after you full force, hell bent, mm -hmm. using new tactics. And yeah, you feel like you're free falling and you're just, you're just trying to get out of it. But it's, it's a very scary time and that's definitely where I help people. I help them, you know, deal with their fears and then make a plan to keep moving forward. Most of the time in these situations, from what I'm hearing, when people request it, they want more shows dealing with the divorce, uh, actually on both of my platforms. Uh, but here's a little different on open session because I get to have a lot of coaches on uh, who talk about this more, where I have more uh, therapists and, and psychotherapists on the other page. Oh, okay. That's not their forte. Right. Here I can have a number of people that specialize in this, and that's what people want to see. At least they, they write and tell me they want to see that because I can't tell Good. them anything other than do something mean, but that would not be right. So, <laughs> so um, mindset has a lot to do with it then. A person's mindset could be stuck, though, wouldn't you say, uh, almost in a frozen yeah. mode when they're approaching this? Absolutely. I mean, there's literally the physiological, like, biochemical stuck where your brain's been soaking, right, in these stress hormones, maybe 
for years and years during the marriage, if, you know, there were, was a lot of abuse and even, you know, and fear in the marriage, but definitely after in the divorce. And so you cannot think in that environment and you need someone to talk you through it. And I always tell people the reason I believe a coach is so valuable is you have to talk through this stuff. I cannot tell you how many times in a session, I don't know regarding, it doesn't matter what it's about. The right. last five minutes, there will be this epiphany. And it's because we spent the whole mm -hmm. hour talking through it. And then it's like, okay, that's what I want to do. Or, oh my gosh, I never realized that before. Or, you know, and now I have this plan going forward or now I have this new strategy, but right. you have to talk through it. And you can't do it when you're just sitting there alone in a vacuum, you know, trying to cope, but you're right. Mindset is the only thing that matters because it's the only thing you have control of when this person is coming at you, attacking you from all angles, you only have control of this because you have zero control of them. And when you truly master that, mm -hmm. that's when the calm starts to set in and you start to feel a little bit of a shift and a little bit more like you're on the offense and less on the defense. And um, yeah, it's definitely 99.9% .9 about mindset. So, realistically, in order for a person to walk this path of having that aha moment in a session with you, they can expect to necessarily get that aha moment and clarity just talking to their friend who may not be able to help them get that clarity. Some people right. just stick within their bubble, and their bubble may not be able to help them when maybe they need to see someone like you. Mm -hmm. You know, that is such a good point because there are a couple of issues there um, with the friends when it comes to divorce. One, you can burn your friends out. I mean, I remember a time I had the dearest, dearest friends and even my sisters, <laughs> that I, they want to be there for you. They want to do everything for you. They want to help you. Mm -hmm. but, and you just, you can't stop talking about it. It's so overwhelming. And these stories are mind blowing. The things that people go through in these divorces, yeah. I can't believe how many people I've helped and I'm still, I'll get a new client and I listen to their story and I'm still like, what? You're still like, amazed. You're still, I always say, oh yeah. my God, I'm so surprised, but I'm not surprised. That's one of my yeah. favorite sayings. So when you have friends, they want to help you so much. And, and they come to a point lots of times where they just don't know what to do. And they're saddened and frustrated over it. And then the other yeah. part of that is, you know, I, so I have this great example. I have a client who whose mother was just so upset about what was going on and said, you need to call him and do da, 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 da. You're not doing this and you're, that's not right. And you shouldn't. And so she called her ex and said, da, 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 da. I'm not doing this. And that, da, da, da. well, is mom wrong? No, in a logical, rational world, what she was going <laughs> through wasn't fair, right? It wasn't right. Was he like a jerk? Was he doing nasty underhanded things? Absolutely. Unfortunately, that thing she did. Mom was wrong. Mom was wrong. In, in the legal it. family court legal system, <laughs> backfired. He's, he's still writing about it in his declarations. That one yeah. thing. And so that's yeah. where a coach would have been like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Sati, Sati. We're not doing that. Sati, yeah, yeah, Sati. Yeah, yeah. But mom, I see where mom was coming from. I totally see. Yeah. She's like yeah. trying to protect her baby. And, oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Right. But, but uh, this is why sometimes the bubble of friends and family can serve one purpose, but a coach affords an opportunity to have a specific time frame within a week, a day, or whatever it may be to reach out and talk about it and then yeah. still move about your day and not have that dominate your, your mind. Yeah. You can still go be productive with your children and other things. Yeah. That's just my perspective. Yep, uh, absolutely. I, but you sure you know, you're ready for this? Go yeah, ahead. you're going to say something. Oh, no, I was just going to say, but when it does come to friends, can I give everyone a piece of advice? This is the time in your life that you ask for help with babysitting, with somebody making you, helping you make meals, with, you know, if they, so and so's cut you off financially, take that 20 bucks. Don't be proud. Right, just right. ask for help right now from those people that love you. That's what they can do for you. Right. Do not close off a, an open hand that's willing to help or, yes. or 
leave a meal at your porch or bring over some food or whatever it may be. It's not a strike against uh, uh, a person's dignity. It's no. an opportunity for them to heal completely yes. and know that they have a, a new community or people that have maybe seen it for, for years and now they're willing to step up now that that person, narcissistic or not, but that bad behavior person is out of the way. That is such a good point because a lot of them have seen it for years, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, they're, I just, bet they're just being nice and they're being quiet. So they're at the barbecue. People, they're at the barbecue going yes. like, "Yeah, that's not going to make it." That's they're not going to make myself. it. Myself, yeah. Once <laughs> once the breakup happens, you have this swarm of people going. We knew we, yeah. we didn't yeah. know what to say. You, yeah. you know, like it's they they all come knocking, and so yeah, you're right. Let them help. And yeah. this is the other thing I always ask clients if they say they, well, I, you know, I don't know. And she's already watched my kids three days this week. And I'd say, well, would you do it for her? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Take the help. <laughs> yeah. Because taking the help really is an opportunity to, to grow and move away from that situation. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, could, you, could you drink a little bit slower so I can get more air time for that cup? Uh, oh, the, the like cup my, is the coolest. Like oh yeah, just accidentally <laughs> you just accidentally be talking and have it come in real slow off screen. Yeah, yeah no, yes, back. There you go. I'm sorry. I'm just a marketing. I'm just a marketing knucklehead. I knew you'd mega, appreciate mega that. Mega mind. I think I should say a marketing mega mind. I just. I like it. I I love the cup. That was really cool. Okay, here we go. There are no excuses, only lessons. Talk to us about that. That's a posting oh. you had September. 15th as well. You're a very busy woman on September 15th, 2020. But uh, there, are o there are no mistakes, only lessons. I was just going to say, it's not excuses, it was mistakes, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Excuse me. Yeah, Excuse me. Yeah, Hold yes. on. I made a mistake when I said... <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, there are no mistakes, uh -huh. only lessons. Yeah. I'm glad somebody remembers her posting. Yep. Exactly. I, you know what? There are no mistakes. Don't you dare beat yourself up about choosing this person or falling for things that they told you or, you know, falling in love and then, you know, feeling manipulated later or staying too long. Don't you dare. It's just a lesson. Okay. It's a lesson that you learn from. Like I said, it's a new platform you're going to jump from of which you operate the rest of your life. And I also love the post, I never lose, either I win or I learn. It's the same thing. And okay, I have to say, okay. that post is that was your, timely Is that your post me. as well? <laughs> that I have a post. I don't remember if it's on my podcast Instagram or my Jackie Miller coaching Instagram. Okay, but go ahead. Yeah, it was one I love. I mean, in just a little insight, I had, I had just had a court case or hearing that didn't go so well. And so I came home and I was like, oh, no, 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 I don't lose. I don't lose. I just learned. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I learned. I love it. And then we come back. <laughs> I love it. As a father of two daughters, tell them, you never lose. You just, you're just readjusting because you're about to take a win. Yep. <laughs> you're yep. only in the third quarter. Yep. You got it. Every so, day is you know, a school day. No one ever graduates. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I never met a strong person with an easy path. Oh, heck no. Another one of your postings. What's the, oh my, listen to us with all the phrases and the, what's, okay, so help me with this one. What's the phrase? Like, if you want good advice, ask the guy with all the scars yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's like that. Yeah. Or, uh, uh, oh my goodness, I just heard it. Somebody, same thing, but somebody changed the end of it. And they said, ask the guy with all the broken bones. Yeah, <laughs> that's running a marathon. It's kind yeah, of like yeah. I had to think about what he's telling me. I was going like, "Hey, that's pretty good." It's because I've heard good, it a huh? different way, and he went like, "No, I just changed it because I've had broken bones and healed, and then I I ran a marathon." I went like, "Hey, he made it his own." That was yeah, pretty good. Absolutely. Well, and yeah. that's kind of well, not kind of. That is why I became a coach and consultant because I'm like, okay, I've got these battle scars yeah. that other people need to benefit from. <laughs> yeah. No, know? no, that no, that's true. Why, no, why not? Why wouldn't yeah. I, you know? And you, you'd be amazed how many people find it educational for them at that very moment when they needed to hear it, when maybe others have heard it numerous times because they've passed that stage. Mm -hmm. uh, this discussion is, is something that I've had discussed multiple times since uh, my daughters and I started this, these channels and been doing it for a year. People are not tired of it at all. They yeah. want to hear it more because more of them are experiencing it. 
especially as one person wrote me during COVID, they are now in this position of divorce, of a narcissist, and they have no idea what to do. Yeah. For like over three decades, they've been married. Yeah. And it's just, I find it quite fascinating that, you know, people don't know that you exist and others like yourself with the scars that are ready, willing, and capable to help them not feel afraid anymore, mm -hmm. not to feel alone anymore, yep. not to feel that this is an unaffordable or that they can't afford to move forward. Right. That you're able to be there for them. And you have a podcast like, like others, you have a podcast that can fortify them as they can get some support as they go yes. through it. Yes. And that's my goal is to both have survivors on as well as just yes. experts from everything you can imagine. Just, you know, you, you, you just can't learn enough. And I do recognize that people in this arena that have gone mm -hmm. through this, for some reason, we cannot learn enough. We can't stop reading about it. We can't wow. stop talking about it in a good way. Um, right, right. We, we all want to help each other. We want to, uh, you know, it, it's just, so it's a really interesting phenomenon in this little subculture we have. Speaking of, of experts, if uh, you had to, if you had to explain to someone beginning their journey why it's important that they recognize the intensity and the depth of dealing with a high conflict person. They need to understand that they're not dealing with just Joe Blow or Jane Blow. They're dealing with someone who has intentions to hurt, destroy, annihilate them. Why is it important for them to really grasp that they're dealing with a high conflict person? You know, let's, can we still on, stay on the same track? <laughs> Another Jackieism is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. Keep going. <laughs> you're the you're the diva, the superstar of the day. Right. I'm just your co-host. Right. Go I ahead. Look, so, if you hit a giant pothole and you don't know what's coming, it's pretty jarring. Yeah. If you have to hit that pothole, regardless, but you know what's coming, you can brace yourself, right? Got it. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much what this is. So. Once in a while, I do get a client, and it's before they've left the situation, um, mm -hmm. just as an example. And part of what I do is we'll profile your spouse and mm -hmm. figure out the triggers. And, you know, I'll ask certain questions about what, because most likely what the control issues are in the marriage will blow up even bigger in the divorce. Um, and then we can just anticipate things. I mean, it's like there's, if there's a list of 10, most of these people do nine on the list. I mean, it, it blows uh, me away that this group of people who have never met. All do the same. All do the same thing, and they even use the same words. And I know they're all different, and they have different idiosyncrasies, but it, <laughs> I'm like, where is the hidden school? It's like Hogwarts. It's like oh they're all going to school somewhere, uh, <laughs> and we can't, like, let's find platform eight and a half and blow it up. I mean, it's, it's like, like this, this evil university somewhere in the universe. Yeah, but, you know, and, I mean, really talking about it beforehand and understanding what could happen, um, you just hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst, and you, uh, you get as prepared as you can. You get a team in place. You, you know, I sort of just let you know all the things that could happen. And when they do, we're there to work through them because we'll see which style he or she's going to throw, you know, whether it's a curveball or, a, you know, fastball, fastball, fastball whatever it may be. Fastball. But, but these are things, these potholes, these, these uh, landmines are not easily seen by those who are thinking this hopefully will go peaceful. Uh, there will be no alienation allegations or other things coming their way. And then that's when they run into problems. But that's why the importance of having a coach, uh, someone that can support an individual during the divorce to help them. Well, you, you, you're you recognizing the patterns that yes. that others won't see because right. it's their first time going through it. Yeah. Uh, so that helps. Uh, but also communication is important. Yes? No? Oh, you mean like within the divorce? Yes. Oh, it's huge. Um, you can make or break your case if you're not communicating right. I mean, there are all kinds of 
potential potholes. I, I, you know, I, any of us that get online and research narcissistic abuse, you'll mm -hmm. usually come across gray rocking, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, mm -hmm. you know, to just sort of almost ghost this person, um, which is great if you don't have children together. You know, trying to just cut off contact. Wonderful. That's going to be a problem. If you have children together, not only just from a co-parenting standpoint, but the, if you're still in a custody battle, the court does not like that. And the other side can easily make you look uncooperative and it can super backfire. So not only just communicating in general, but then the way you communicate, always looking squeaky clean, like the great co-parent. Okay, like, how, how, how can they be squeaky clean though? When, when, you get, when you're getting ticked off and you're getting upset, that's going to be hard, right? You send me, you write out that <laughs> oh, okay. nasty text and then you send it to okay. me, you don't send it to them. <laughs> okay, so, wait, so is that a, you actually do that? Do you, yeah. do you tell them? Oh, do yeah. Do you tell them? Wait, like if you do you, do you read out, it? Do you read it? Oh, yeah. 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 Just to gauge how mad they are. <laughs> are they Just making to, progress? <laughs> yep. I'll say, write it out. Now let's, now let's look at the other version. <laughs> or, you know Wait, what I'll say? Wait, they tell you there is no other version, Jackie. <laughs> I meant what I said. <laughs> well. I meant what I said, Jackie. I'm not taking it back. You're oh, like, okay, I know. And I'm like, but I'm, you can't tell them that. The judge will use it against you. And well, you'll I'm never see your say, children again. Stand up. Hold up this text. Pretend the judge is standing in front of you. Now read it out loud. Wow. That's and cool. imagine the judge can't figure out who the problem person is. Okay? <laughs> so the judge hasn't figured it out yet. They just know that these two high-conflict individuals are in their courtroom. They don't know which one's the problem, or they assume you're both the problem. You stand up and read that text. Bam. I think it's you. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. he's not... He's not seeing the. He may not be able to see or has seen the first blow that the narcissist uh, person throws, but he right. will see the second blow that the right. innocent person throws. Right. And they'll suffer the consequences. When it comes to representation, why is it important to make sure that a coach can help a person with representation in the courtroom? Uh, well, so what do you mean? Well, in our show prep. <laughs> <laughs> when okay. it comes to representation is a coach able to give some advice so the person knows they have so, the proper representation do, you know okay, what this so is I'll, you know I'll what this is we did the show prep and we were having so much fun i only wor wrote one word down <laughs> no no if i show it to you you probably can't you can't even see it my i i wrote one thing down and we at the time i wrote it we were laughing and i had to <laughs> we were talking about something and then i had to write representation <laughs> And I okay. totally forgot to put the words that went with it. It was a sentence. But I'm a guy. I think I'm not that bright. You get a pass. You you get a, oh, <laughs> I better get a pass. You get right, a pass. You get a pass. Go ahead. I think what you're probably talking about is presentation. Oh, like so. I said. <laughs> Wait, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. <laughs> I just had to laugh at myself there. Go ahead. Oh, no. I lost you. Can you hear me? You got a lot of exes, Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Everybody, everybody listening. You can't hear me either. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We can't hear nothing. Testing one, two, three. We can't hear nothing. Okay, so we're gonna be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> 